Thank you, Anupam. And next we have uh, Dr. Amar Pujari, Assistant Professor from RP Center Ames. Sir is an imaging innovator, and he is going to shed some light on the innovative approaches in wet lab training for residents. I think we can relate a lot to Anupam's presentation. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Pranesh, and uh, good morning, Divijay sir. Hi, Dr. Divakant. Hi, Dr. Pranesh, and everybody. So, is my slide visible? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. So, I do not have any financial interest, uh, but uh, previous presentation, Dr. Anupam's presentation, whatever it was there, his concerns were uh, genuine and uh, they need to be addressed. So, being one of the highest uh, loaded residency training program we have at RP Center, so we have around 110 junior residents and uh, around 60 senior residents. So these people were not getting a proper uh, hands-on training because patients were not there. Of course, uh, theoretical teaching is going on since uh, almost more than one year since almost you can say 15, 16 months, but uh, they can read the theoretical things, but the surgical touch, the hand-eye coordination, the memory you are going to get with your hand during surgery, that is of Im immense importance because if you are not able to gather that during your residency, so the whole uh, life is going to be uh, quite, quite of, tough. So to address this one, as we know, uh, in ophthalmology, microsurgical training is vital, right? So it needs to be told in a systematic manner. And as Dr. Anpam rightly said, it's a one-to-one -one human interaction, that human touch needs to be there, right? Uh, but in recent COVID times, we know that this has hampered very severely. We cannot be with our close friends, right? So we need to take proper uh, social distancing. So during that one, Theoretical teaching continued, as many people said through webinars and other things. But practically, uh, our surgical training is quite important in ophthalmology. So to address these issues, many uh, publications, many guidelines were appeared in various national international journals. We are all aware, almost since one year, many journals are publishing only COVID-related articles. But ultimately, when it comes to individual level, we need to address what is exactly happening to a particular resident, how he is feeling. Because one thing is social distancing. And we can teach the theoretical things to lab, but uh, we need to tell them the surgical things because that will make them more interactive. They should then uh, get the idea that no, no, we don't, you need to do ophthalmology, ophthalmology is interesting. They should get that interesting, uh, interesting nature or the interesting thought. So that is the, this thing. So to address this one, we have many reasons. They were coming with many complaints. So I tried to explore more ways. So I found a limited number of uh, surgical techniques in the literature. Previously, even though I have described one or two techniques on GoTai. So that made me to take major uh, this thing decision so that I can explore more. So I want to tell the same thing here so that other residents can use this one, right? So this is a simple video. I want to say how we can mount the globe while doing different kinds of surgeries. The most important thing is to inspect the globe, whether the conjunctival scleral integrity is there or not, how about the ocular tension, right? So if you do this one, then try to uh, identify the anatomical landmarks like this is equator and this is limbus, right? So then corneal integrity, you can check whether cornea is clear or not. Anterior chamber do not have many pigments. So then only can do a cataract surgery. So after that one, fixing it to a mannequin head, that is quite important. So we are going to discuss so many surgeries. So for corneal, cataract and iris related surgeries, we can say that we can uh, wrap the globe in an upright position like this. So we are going to wrap the swab around the equator, right? So we, there should be visible cornea and some part of the anterior sclera. So this is for anterior segment surgeries, right? So if you want to do some other surgeries like glaucoma surgeries and any kind of scleral based or limbal based procedures. So in that case, you need to wrap in a slightly slanted position like this, where you are going to infinitely touch the limbus, but superiorly you are going to go beyond slightly the equator. So around 10 to 15 millimeter, the anterior is visible, so where you can uh, do a proper trabeculectomy flap or any other kind of perforation repair you can do by putting the eye in a slanted position. The third position was when you want to do some other procedure like extra muscle surgery, that is squint procedures. You can find extra muscles in go time. Many people were surprised. How can we find? But the thing is like, you need to say the local slaughter people that we need more of extra muscular uh, residual tissue around the globe. They are going to take out only the globe, but you can say that we need more extra tissue to try to dissect. We'll dissect that one. So in that case, you can order the globes. So like this, you can explore the extra muscle and you can wrap in such a way that uh, half of the cornea and till the posterior optic nerve that is wrapped and remaining portion is exposed that is scleral sorry erectus muscle insertion. So how to mount these globes once you are wrapped inside the 
cotton this thing so you can uh, put the glue for anti segment surgeries like this so then you can rotate either horizontally or vertically right similarly for trap and other glaucoma related procedures so you can slightly take a slanted position like this and for extraocular muscle surgeries again you can use this one but you need to do more slanting and you need to take out the rectus muscle so once you take out the rectus muscle you need to pass a suture along the free end so that you can simulate the resting tension within the rectus muscle so then you can do various surgeries so i will describe one by one so these are extraocular muscle surgery techniques so as we know uh, basically strabismus muscle has only simple surgeries but it's planning that is going to require your uh, real knack so but you can teach the residents so that they can enjoy the surgeries so similarly as i said in the previous video we explored the uh, rectus muscle resection and we told them and since 3 years our residents are routinely practicing rectus muscle resection dissection and plication surgery so this is how you can do resection as well you can mark a certain distance uh, on the rectus muscles and you can get, take out the uh, or you can resect the muscle and you can resuture back the muscle onto the sclera so similarly you can do uh, plication this is described by professor pradeep sharma where it is called as reinforced plication it was his technique so that also we are uh, teaching our residents at our rp center so similarly cataract and eye surgery are quite famous as you know feco and ecc has been frequently taught but at the same time nobody has thought about how to put the eye in the bag in the sulcus and anterior chamber here you can see in in this eye we deliberately induced a posterior capsular end and we told them how to do vitrectomy so make sure that pupil is regular and we made him to put him or her in the uh, an aci hole so that they can practice and they can implant the, as well as they can expand the anterior chamber eye holes as well as sulcus and back based eye holes so then they need to maintain the proper suture uh, practices so that ultimately everything till the wound closure is simulated properly so similarly some of the anterior segment enthusiasts they approach me they said sir we want to do sfl but if you look into the horizontal diameter of the goat's eye that has around 14 to 15 mm compared to human eye it's quite large so single multi piece i will won't be able to you won't be able to fix that one so in that what i did is like i took another uh, haptic of another uh, multi piece eye so i sutured them so that we can increase the length of the haptic so some of the anti segment surgeons three to four surgeons srs so they were able to uh, create flaps and they were able to insert this eye hole along the scleral flap so similarly icl was also simulated by taking a dummy icl or a square edged eye hole right so in corneal surgeries majority of the surgeons uh, students they learn that uh, how to create a stromal dissection so that they can paint it they can do a corneal tattooing by simply putting the tefan blue dye so similarly anterior lamellar keratoplasty can be done by judged dissection using crescent blade or even scissors right so similarly this is also routinely being described that is full thickness keratoplasty just to refine their surgical Uh, skills where they can put proper radial corneal sutures so glaucoma wise we told them how to do a systematic uh, congenital peritomy and step wise scleral dissection they can uh, make out a thin flap or even thick flap then how to create osteotomy and how to make sure that you have placed the uh, sorry you have sutured the scleral flap properly some of the people were even practiced how to put releasable sutures and how to release them they also told that and some people came with uh, extruded or used egb wall so we even we told that we can put this beneath the congenital tenons and you can make a proper anterior chamber entry and you can have a experience of how to put egb in gota as well so trauma injuries are more common we get at least four to five injuries every day at our center so it's quite important that the resident at first or second semester must learn how to repair corneal injuries even scleral injury so we systematically simulated even simple injuries this is an example of simple injury complex injuries only scleral injuries extending beyond the muscle dry radiate perforation everything we were able to simulate even the lenticular injuries lens suspension so some people practice even pupilloplasty they used 90 proline and as we know the go type pupil is oval rather than circular so you can close one portion and you can simulate single pass four through pupilloplasty and similarly manually we induced iridot dialysis on one part you can see here we have induced the dialysis so we try to repair the dialysis using the same proline suture right so for corneal and ocular surface sterigem as we know probably every resident has done during his first year residency first surgery they will get a sterigem so it was like dissecting the conjunct conjunctiva in a graded manner that was important so many people did sterigem uh, dissection on the same eye in many aspects right so dissected corneal buttons some anti segment surgeon used just to peel them so that they wanted to uh, prepare a dismec roll dimec roll and we have national eye bank so people who are going to retrieve the eyes so they must be taught how to take out the eye tissue 
and how to separate the evil tissue, how to have a proper scleral ring. So oculoplasty wise and uh, retina wise, we have lesser techniques. So this is buckling technique where we can take out four individual recti muscles from different eyes and we can suture the recti muscles and we can tell them how to put the buckling sutures uh, band as well as even at one sutures, how to tie the final implant. So we do not have eyelids because if you want to bring the goat head that needs a drastic modification in your like ophthalmic wet lab. So what we did is we, can, we told them how to do evisceration. That is one of the procedure we perform, how to put implant and how to put secondary sutures. So this is a, a poster I have made and we have pasted it in our national skill development lab so that every SR, whoever is doing glaucoma, retina, they can come here and whatever the thing we have described, they can practice and they can innovate even more. So we enumerated all the uh, uh, techniques in the literature. So goat eye, rabbit eye, human eyes, we made uh, tables and we were able to publish this as a major review so that we included another 50, 55 studies from the literature. And we told around 20 new techniques. So we made a large uh, compilation of this one so that everyone across the globe can practice these kind of uh, uh, techniques during this uh, COVID lockdown. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Amar, sir. It was very refreshing to see other surgeries also being performed apart from non-cataract. Uh, so I have a question. Most often the difficulty what we faced was the soft eyeballs in goats. So is there any way to circumvent that problem? Because only if the eyeballs are tense enough, we can perform whatever procedure we wish to. Yes. The one thing is like, as I showed, you can wrap the globe. So the thing is like, what you need to do is you try to, you try to squeeze on the posterior aspect, then try to put the gauze so that either by titrating the uh, gauze piece, we can put more pressure. You can create more pressure in the antechamber. So that is one thing or else you can inject some viscoelastic in the vitreous cavity so that the eye is going to balloon up so that you can do. But uh, routinely we go, we are going to tighten the eye from the posterior aspect because that will stabilize the globe in the mannequin head as well as that is going to increase your IOP. That's what we do. Right. What if we don't have a mannequin head? Is there any other way to fix no, we are, I'm sorry, we are fortunate enough to have mannequin head, but I feel we can uh, spend around 500 or 1000 bucks to get you on uh, our own mannequin head because that is the best because that is going to give your nasal contour, bro contour, everything because everything you are going to feel that it's a human eye except eyelids. Majority of the things even you can create a deep seated eye scenario, you can make out a more myopic eye scenario. So it is better we can spend some amount of that one, uh, some price, some, some uh, money on that one and can buy a mannequin head. That will be better rather than going for some other. Uh, plain thing where you are going to put an eyeball. So that will not scenario, uh, that will not simulate any human this thing. Thank you, sir. Uh, Diva Pansi, you want to add anything? Yes, Dr. Amar, any experience with those artificial eyes that are available? Uh, we have, Dr. Namrata has brought some of the artificial corneas and uh, Dr. Gunjan and other people are planning, they are taking ping pong balls. Those are rubber balls. So where they are creating a uh, crater, so that uh, the crater will be around 10 millimeters. So in that one, they are going to put some dough. So that will simulate as a your nucleus. And they are putting the artificial cornea. Then they are doing the cataract surgery. Now, artificial cornea we have. Rest of the artificial eye do not. We do not have. We mainly rely on goat eye. So uh, another quick question, Amar. Uh, so you know we have the the surgical training center at RP Center that I think you you would have used. And you're also probably directing now. Yes. And as residents, all of us have gone through initial wet lab before we moved into you know surgery. So. Uh, how easy is it for outside people to access that surgical training center? And what difference did you find between what you did there versus, you know, the real life? Obviously, there's a difference, but, you know, you're... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. As I said, uh, it's mainly Tushar sir and Dr. Titya who are heading the uh, lab, sir. So whatever I did, I had these ideas and I went to those people and I told them these are the things we can explore. They say they gave me green signals. So last time in some of the UC webinars, some people asked Dr. Tushar also, how we can access the National Skill Development Lab, sir. So he said, you can give her uh, this thing and you can mail me so that he will prepare a timetable and can access our national lab also, sir. So that is one way they can come inside the lab. But if you are asking me how uh, another common person can do this on outside, sir. So in that can, you can purchase a mannequin head and goat size are available for 20 or 30 rupees, sir. Every uh, city has a uh, 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 goat slaughterhouse, sir. So can uh, demand them, if you give 20 or 40 rupees, you can get good number of eyes. Sir. Even for 100 rupees, you'll get five, five eyes. So you can practice on those. It's very uh, cheap, sir. So I mean to say. Right, right. Thanks. Yes, sir. And you see, actually, I hope you see members can also get in touch with you. If yes, sir. Sure, sir. I, I can be of any help, sir. Whatever you say. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you.